Okay, I'm Resta Burnham, and for many years I uh, taught A Course in Miracles class, and in the process of that I developed what I call a mind map. And this chart is really helpful in uh, making sense of the course, but it doesn't matter if you are a course student or not, you can find it very helpful if you are on any kind of a path, meditation, or um, uh, just trying to gain insight into what's going on in your life, trying to, trying to get unstuck from situations that are very painful, uh, trying to figure out how to live in this crazy world. So I, I really believe this mind map can be helpful to a lot of people. So I want to share it today. And so this is just the introduction in the future. I think I'm going to go into other topics, um, for instance, such as uh, how you look at being sick or how you look at feeling like you don't have enough supply uh, or are lacking or how you deal with various upsets or addictions or whatever. So there's any number of places we can go with this. Um, the basic thing is, the idea is, um, I seem to be a 78-year-old woman named Resta, uh, but I'm not, that's not true. And you seem to be the person that you looked at in the mirror this morning, and you're not. That's not true. So the mind map is going to help us figure out who we are and where we are and even when we are. So let's start in. So uh, A Course in Miracles um, doesn't talk a lot about heaven or God other than using the term God. But it's because we live in this dualistic world. We think we're people. We think we're bodies. We think we're surrounded by discrete objects um, that all have names. And we all perceive all of these things differently. And um, so we can't really comprehend oneness. So the Course speaks of God as a oneness joined as one. Now, the basic idea is you cannot chop God into pieces. But we truly believe that we have chopped God into pieces, that we have chopped ourselves away from wholeness and uh, uh, made up a whole world in which we are discreet people walking around with volition and will and we can run our lives and choose to do this and choose to do that and so forth. Um, so while we cannot uh, leave oneness, Ideas do not leave their source, and our source is oneness. We can dream that we have done it. And so when we had what the Course calls a tiny mad idea of being separate from our source, being on our own, being the boss, uh, we fell into a dream. Now this level up here is all the dream level. There's no world, there's no bodies up here, there's no personal selves. So in that first moment that we fell into the dream. Uh, we're now a dreamer and we find, we look around and we say, where am I? What's going on? And we find two thoughts waiting for us, or you could think of them as two voices. So the ego voice over here, which is just, it's not a separate entity. It's just the part of us that wants to be separate. Um, that, that ego voice says, uh, oh, you left heaven, um, we'll have a lot of fun, it'll, it'll be good because now you don't have to be part of that oneness anymore, you can do your own thing, you can be special. Um, okay, <laughs> you can be special and um, uh, stick with me kid and, and we'll, have, uh, we'll have a good time. Or like, you know, I got something good here for you. Come on and take my little drug <coughs> or my candy. And uh, it sets up a story that once we decide that this is the way that we want to go, there's a story of sin, guilt, and fear. But let me go back to the other side here so you know that there is a choice. While we're dreaming, we have a choice of who we want to be our teacher in the dream. Do we want to believe in separation and being special? 
Or do we want to remember, because there's a memory that comes with us, we can't leave our memory. There's a memory which the Course calls the right mind, and in this memory is the truth, the assurance, nothing happened, there is no separation. You're just dreaming. You're just having a bad dream. And uh, the Course uses the term Holy Spirit for that. Okay, so um, this, this, this right mind, the Holy Spirit, doesn't ever shout at us, doesn't ever scold us, doesn't ever say, oh, you bad, bad <laughs> dreamer, son of, son of God. Um, it just is like a light that just shines. It's love that just loves. It's peace that is just peaceful and it's always there and it's always with us. But over here, uh, there's this story going on. Oh, you're so bad. You left God, you destroyed that oneness and uh, he's gonna be out to get you. You'd better look out. And so the ego tells us uh, what you need to do is we're gonna break ourselves into lots of pieces and we're gonna go down here and make a world of time and space. And so that's where the world came from in the, in the Course's uh, story of how things happened. So now it's going to take the sin, guilt, and fear and the idea of a separate existence and now we have a body. A body is the symbol of separateness. Here's a separate being walking around with volition. Ooh, it's got a brain. It can think and it can evolve and it can get things. Uh, and it's made up to look out around itself to get its needs met because this body is what has been called a need machine. It's constantly needing, it needs to breathe, it needs to eat, it needs uh, love, it needs comfort, it needs warm clothes, it needs the latest fashions, it needs a car to get around in nowadays, it needs uh, lots of plastic or cash uh, to spend. Uh, it needs, 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 and um, it wants to confirm its existence. But here we have, across the middle, the veil of amnesia, because the ego never wants us to look back here in the mind, because if we looked back here in the mind and remembered that we're dreamers, we would remember that we have a choice. Um, so over here, uh, with this, on, just because it's unconscious doesn't mean it's not working. It's, it's busily at work. And this ego is filled with self-hatred, self-loathing, uh, self-destructiveness, and it's filled with uh, guilt. And the whole name of the game, once we get uh, projected down here into the world, the name of the game is to blame. And we have to find other people. That's why we made up all those other people. Um, because if I can take my guilt, my unconscious guilt that's up here, and park it on all the other people in my life, then I'll feel better. So from day one, we are blaming. And we are projecting. And so just even think about um, birth. So... <clears throat> The mother is suffering. Um, this is this is very painful. Usually, birth. Uh, nobody gets away scot free. <laughs> and then uh, the baby suffers. Uh, here it was, all curled up in its lovely little womb, and then <laughs> these <laughs> contractions come, or the doctor rips open the belly and pulls it out, and <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Uh, but it, it's in this world that has to learn how to breathe, it can't see, it doesn't know what's going on, people are doing things to it, and sticking needles in it, and, and all of those things. <laughs> and wah, wah! <laughs> so we have suffering going on just from the act of birth. Uh, Dr. Kenneth Wapnick used to say that being born is crucifixion. Being mm -hmm. born is crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we make a big deal about how sweet and wonderful it is. You know, this beautiful little soul has come to be with us. Oh, we love this baby so much. <laughs> Until uh, they become a brat. 
So, so this body self here now develops a self-concept. Now that self-concept, remember, comes from up here. Um, it's gonna feel lots of self-hatred, lots of unworthiness. We look all around, we go to therapists, we find out uh, why, oh, I, I don't feel good about myself because I was part of a big family and nobody paid attention to me, or my parents played favorites, they liked my brothers and sisters better than they liked me, or um, I was bullied in school, or um, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not attractive enough, uh, my family didn't have any money, and, and um, or I'm born into a particular victim group, my skin is brown, people discriminate against me because my skin is brown, or they discriminate against me if they find out that I'm gay, <clears throat> um, or they discriminate against me maybe even for being a woman. Some people take that as their victim story. Uh, anyway, so we all carry these, we develop a self-concept, and we put on a face of innocence, that's the term from the course, and behind the face of innocence, we're terrified that someone's gonna get in and see what we're really like, <laughs> and see how unworthy we really are. I love the, uh, some of the reality TV shows because um, when, they're, when they're showing the contestants in the various shows, you always, uh, you know, you get to play the, oh, my parent died, card or you get you get the unworthiness that comes out in all the contestants because no matter how well the contestant does they have that feeling of like I don't deserve this I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough so they'll do something to pay for it so now this is the exact same person over here so what is the difference the difference is that when we've suffered enough over here we at some point reach that place in our life where we say, God, there's got to be another way. There's got to be some other, other way of, of living in this world that's not so miserable. And remember that we all carry a spark of this with us. So this little self here has the spark of God somewhere. I don't care who they are. Hitler had his own spark of God. Uh, Osama bin Laden had his own spark of God, and the pe person you hate the most has their own spark of God. Uh, or the, the abusive parent has their own spark of God. Everyone has this. And the way that it shows up in our lives is sometimes you just feel this yearning. I don't belong here. There's something wrong with this world. I want to go home. That's one of the ways that it shows up. Uh, or maybe... Um, you attribute it to what you learned in church or you know whatever religion you belong to um, you you have some sort of teaching that, that that there is something more that there is some higher power that you can call upon that there is a god um, so when things become really miserable here you finally say all right i'm ready there's got to be something else and start and you start searching okay you're going to have experiences when you do that. This will never force anything on you. Holy Spirit never forces, never demands, never commands, uh, but it's always this light that's shining within you. The minute that you open up just the teeniest little bit mm -hmm. to that light, um, that light is going to show up in some way. It could show up in somebody just being there when you need them. Uh, it could be... It, it could take the form of just somebody helping you. It could take the form of something you thought was so difficult. All of a sudden, it's not so difficult anymore. Um, and, um, and, and you begin to learn, uh, you begin to discern that um, sometimes I can be stuck in my stinking thinking. <laughs> Uh, over here and everything's miserable and everything's wrong um, and sometimes I can be more peaceful sometimes I can uh, be more forgiving and I can put aside my anger sometimes I can be helpful to others so all that that means is that you're beginning to align with this mind which will show you a different perception of whatever is going on 
Now, <clears throat> the mind is split in various ways. So you saw that we, we, we believe, we dream that we have split off from the oneness. Then up here, you have a split between the thought of total selfishness, me, 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 and um, shared interests over here in the Holy Spirit, and nothing happens, peacefulness. So there's a split. The biggest split that people have to deal with is the split between here and getting up here above this veil of amnesia to the dreamer, because this is the only place where we get any real choice. That's what the dreamer does, he chooses. Um, uh, Kenneth Wapnick always called this the decision maker. This is where we choose, and we're always choosing back and forth, back and forth between the two. And how do we know, you know, is this body miserable, angry, upset, resentful, full of grievances, blaming, judging, or is this body seemingly peaceful, kind, helpful, just taking the next step, doing what needs to be done. Um, and so you know from this which mind you are aligned with. So using this, we can and we will in uh, future presentations, and uh, we will talk about, for instance, the whole topic of the victim story. And we'll talk, the reason that we want to look at what's up here it's because the only way to undo the ego is to expose it. And as you expose it, there's really nothing there. But it's like uh, if you're a little child and you think that there's something, a monster under the bed or a monster in the closet, um, until you look, until somebody gently takes you by the hand and says, come on, let's look. Let's look under the bed. Let's look in the closet. You're not going to believe it. You're going to be terrified. So it's it's refusing to look keeps this in place. And this is going to keep sending out one painful situation after another. Or we turn the situation into something painful. Until we look. Then by looking, by coming up here, we remember, oh yes, I have a choice. I have a choice. I can choose differently. And you begin to trust this presence within your mind. doesn't matter if you call it Buddha or Jesus or if you believe in uh, spirit guides. Maybe that's your spirit guide up there um, or just a higher power of any kind. Uh, that there is that, that it begins to have a reality for you. Um, so you start with where you are. You start with your feeling of imprisonment. You start with your feeling of pain. You start with your feeling of being stuck, being miserable, feeling unfairly treated. And then if you're willing, just a tiny little bit of willingness to say, I want to see this differently, then you can begin to use this to remember. The Course talks about being above the battleground. Well, here's the battleground down here in the world where we're living every day. And to be above the battleground is we go even just intellectually, we go up and we remember that we're the dreamer and we remember that we have a choice and we ask this presence over here, help me see it differently. Help me see it differently. Um, and we start to ask for guidance. So I think that that will take care of the introduction. Any questions? No questions. <laughs> Can't think of anything right now. That was just so comprehensive. It was. It was very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Resta.